Welcome to The Advocate, your Sunday reminder that important conversations are among the necessary tools for a saner society. My myth today is on the standard of beauty amongst women. Is it really beauty or obsession? Victor is saying today that passion is not enough for success. Juliet labels helplessness as the evil genius in our mind. And finally, Elijah talks about realigning the educational system for global relevance. As always, your panelists are here to share ideas aimed at provoking thoughts with no holds barred. Stay with us. Beauty standard. Is it really beauty? Today I'm going to sound like an old person, yeah. The topic I want to bring to light is the current warped standard of beauty. The reigning thing is to see women in all kinds of wigs, with makeup attuned to drag queens, face colour very different to the skin tone of the rest of the body, and impractical nails that are more like claws. Who sets these standards? Why are women obsessed with them? Who is this all for? Let's look at the hair. Weaves and wigs are far from new and even go back as far as antiquity. However, in this current day, we see all kinds of wigs on ladies' heads that look nothing like what comes out from the head naturally. I understand the functionality of wigs as a protective style, as a fashion item for convenience, but what I don't understand is putting something on your head that looks clearly fake. I am not against wigs as a practical necessity, but why put something so fake on the head that would never grow naturally from a black person's head? Then let's talk face. Studio production makeup, it seems, has become standard for everyday wear. Foundation colour that is shades lighter so that the woman's face is Fanta and her arms are Coca-Cola. Eyebrows that I'm still confused about. Is it one eyebrow or two? What with the white around the brow? White lines and highlighter on the nose and cheek that make me think of battle marks of war. The overall appearance is similar to a drag queen. In fact, our standard of beauty today as women is actually a man. Bob Brisky, when I think of it, seems to be the aesthetic most women are going for these days here in Nigeria. Then add the skin bleaching on top and you know we have a problem with who we are. Whilst this topic can be amusing on the surface to discuss, it actually goes to the root of how deep our disdain for ourselves is, something that the colonial master did a good job of doing. Beauty was that of a blonde, fair-skinned, blue-eyed European woman, and we are still dealing with the ramifications of that as the antithesis was the dark-skinned African woman, and this was shamelessly directly used in advertising. Use this soap and you'll go from a dark Negro to a fair Caucasian. This narrative is absolutely and completely false. Think of the beauty in the versatility of our hair, the beauty in our unique features, and the beauty in the many shades of our brown skin. There's nothing wrong with enhancing what we have. But why are so many women going to the extreme? If you ask men, they prefer a more natural woman. Is it that we women are doing this to compete with other women? All I know is that those of us with daughters need to instill in them from an early age that they are beautiful as they are. Teach them to love their natural hair, to love their features, and to love the color of their skin. Decolonize the mind, and we can decolonize our bodies. Hmm. <clears throat> Very sensitive topic. Mm -hmm. It's very sensitive. It's age long. And the decolonization you're talking about mm -hmm. should start from the home. Mm -hmm. However, the home is just a tiny fraction of the entire world. And the cosmetic industry, the mindset passed down by the colonial masters, has, is so, so big in our hearts and in our minds that it's difficult to actually override this natural beauty mm -hmm. thing. But what we know is that there are some upsides of this artificial beauty mm -hmm. enhancers, if you like, they help some women's confidence. Mm -hmm. Some people actually would actually hit themselves 
if not for these hair aesthetics, mm -hmm. facial aesthetics, skin aesthetics. But you're, you're right. We don't need these things to be beautiful. Beauty is supposed to come from within yeah. and shine out. And men claim they like us natural. But when we see the kind of girls they hang around with, <laughs> it's the other kind of girls. And it puts pressure on us women. I don't think if the world was populated by women alone, we would bother. I, I don't think. Maybe we would. But I don't think we would. So we do it for you guys. And you guys, we see the choices you make when you go out. And there's pressure for us to be accepted by you guys. Just the way you guys go around and do stuff about money so we can accept it. So it's, it's a good one to decolonize, but it's going to be a long one. What do you think, Victor? Yeah, I, I think um, we're struggling with mm -hmm. self-identity mm -hmm. and self-esteem. But it starts with self-identity. Mm -hmm. I mean, the beginning or the essence of life begins at um, identifying who you really are. And let me get a bit neurological. There was a certain horse that was tied to a very um, strong iron. It was blue in color. So the owner took the horse after like one year and then took the horse home and then tied it to a blue chair, like a very weightless chair. Maybe a plastic blue chair. Plastic blue chair. And um, the horse couldn't leave that location for another year. It's called learned helplessness. I'm going to talk Great. about that today. That's what it means. It's called these smart, smart people in the studio today. Learned helplessness is in the mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this, it's a very, it looks like a funny yeah. thought, but it's a very interesting topic, it's right? very deep. Beauty begins in the mind. Why do we ascribe white good, mm -hmm. black? The lighter, the rider. You get so mm -hmm. naturally, people just believe that if something is white or if something is fair, you know that is how um, that it's good. It's That's beautiful. Quality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then if it's dark, if it's black, it it's is inferior. I mean, if you mm -hmm. do the data, I don't, I don't have the data, but if you do the data, mm -hmm. lots of people want to change from becoming black mm -hmm. to becoming. Fair. And I don't have an issue with people wanting to. Look, yeah, we look enhance, better, look enhance, better enhance, enhance their I mean, thing. If you, if you make some yeah. money, you want to enhance, mm -hmm. you know, and all of that. But again, at the basics of that, why are you, mm -hmm. you why do you want to change your mm -hmm. skin? Because color? of you guys. <laughs> no, no, no. So <laughs> I, I actually disagree with that. But, but uh, Elijah Felix, if, as a man, please, let's get your opinion because <laughs> I disagree with Juliet on that. Oh, uh, yes. And that, I actually do to some extent because mm -hmm. if, if not because of the men, because. Even if the men were out of the equation, some women will still do it because of True. jealousy. Mm -hmm. among competition, some, I think. Yeah. Competition, jealousy. Now, let me give you a practical scenario. I, I, was, I, I told you earlier when we were sitting at the lodge that two or five years ago, there was this Chinese journalist, a, a, a journalist from China. Mm -hmm. She hails from China in the US and she was bullied online, mostly some by chauvinists, I guess white chauvinists in the US. And they were telling her that she looks quite ugly, she doesn't fit into the system or so. She had to go for a cosmetic surgery to look like one of them. And it went south. I'll give you another situation. There's another one that trended on social media. If it's not, if I'm not mistaken, two years ago, a woman that wanted to go for is it boot enhancement or yeah, something? Yeah, we don't know. It Tell us. Out. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. Eventually, she go one of Enhancing the gluteus. I saw it. So a woman is as beautiful as what she thinks she is. So I don't think we need enhancement. You cannot be basing your beauty and confidence on something that is temporal. So yet. let's tell women the truth. Toyet. I'm not saying Toyet. Toyet. Let me interrupt. Mm -hmm. But don't base your beauty on something that is temporal. Thank you. Thank you so much. We see your choices. And it influences us. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking for most women. Mm -hmm. I actually, yeah. I've gotten to a level of awareness as a person yeah. that I... Tell us our choices. So, we're talking about women. No, I'm saying, because we see. That's I'm why it was good pressure. It. I'm not going to describe, <laughs> but you get what I mean. So, I if you guys try. start a campaign... Mm -hmm and make the natural ones look beautiful. Mm -hmm. What do you think will happen to like, us? No, no, but if you do that, that's irresponsibility. And no, what, so, the, so no, this is the... This what, is this. What, what, what I said that was, <laughs> you've got to accept yourself the way by you are. yourself. I agree. I don't need to accept you. I agree. To, you get, so I agree. You're but putting you, pressure on the man. And, and no, no, I'm not but saying that. Anyway, I'm just in saying... In instance, I will agree with you, Juliet, now. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that. It takes a lot of level of awareness. To accept yourself for who yeah, you are. Yeah, and self and self reflection. So that's why a lot of you do stuff to make money. Well, don't well, well, you do stuff to make I money. actually agree with but, high but do, in that do So many do don't know what they want to actually. Point in that it also does actually seep into the male psyche because you are told what a beautiful woman is, exactly. right? Exactly. So if if I and I and I and I had an uh, argument with a friend, unfortunately she's passed away now, and we always used to debate these funny things, and she, she never understood when I explained to her that there's something that 
I have an advantage of in this country, just like in, in America it's white skin privilege or white privilege. Here, I have light skin privilege. And I was explaining to her that, and explaining scenarios that it exists. And I'm very conscious of it. I don't feel it's right. And I really feel, for me, I think dark skin, brown skin is beautiful. My husband is dark. Fair skin is beautiful. But we need to see that variety of, of aesthetic mm. in our advertising, in our media, mm. and stop pushing this just one form of beauty. The beauty has, has many diverse forms. Form, yeah. But it does this, this, for example, I'm just picking the light skin thing because I'm light skinned, mm. and everybody in the, who's watching this will see that. It does exist. I can look absolutely terrible, right? and be standing next to a darker-skinned young lady, and she's dressed nicely, and the guy will always pick me. Mm. <laughs> because you're because, because he's not because even <laughs> seeing what I think. He's not well, even seeing me, he's trends. just seeing <laughs> the color of the color of my skin. Color. It has to be better he's for you to be lighter skin. So it, and it doesn't mean that he doesn't find that other one attractive. It's just we've been programmed so yeah. deeply yeah. by yeah. colonization yeah. that anything that is closer to the white man and is better. Tony, let me even tell you something. Guess what? It, now that I'm dark skin, mm -hmm. let me start to. You're not dark skin, though. What are you talking about? You're not dark skin. Okay, you're not okay. Dark compared to Tony. I'm darker okay, than I'm you. Darker. I'm okay, darker. Okay, so now that I'm not so, so light, yeah. if I start to, to tone, that's what they call it. If I start to bleach sure. my skin, I'm just, mm -hmm. you will that see the line of. That annoys me. Okay, bleach. Because you see, it's, 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 you it's, see the it's line special. of men. So if I was having like two men having interest in me now that I'm like this, once I start to trees. to mm -hmm. use the right color of hair, I mean those colors of mm -hmm. hair, mm -hmm. those makeup, mm -hmm. the cue extends. I'm just saying this is one of yeah. the influences. Mm -hmm. But if you check some of those men, their wives and their sisters. It's just like when you guys have money, you <laughs> see that the queue of women increases. It puts pressure on you guys to have money and buy fancy cars. Some of you don't care about the cars and the watches you buy. Look, I think you bring up something really important because you go to the supermarket and all you see is toning cream. <laughs> the, the, the brightness, skin <laughs> bright. <laughs> bright. So, I been so I have to be really conscious well, about what I'm buying. It's, 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 it's business. It's business. But, but That's I think, why I can't say it's business. But it's case, a vicious cycle. This is where advocacy comes in. The relevant government authority. I'm, I'm okay. going to go back. Go back I want to say something. Is you the man? relevant government agencies should make sure those people that are doing cosmetics, cosmetology, uh, whatever, they should make sure they do things that are real. You know, Let me give you an instance. Hot Somebody hot post hot something hot. on social media. I think I forgot in the country where the person's uh, edited image mm -hmm. says better than the, this. And the, mm -hmm. I think the government had to force that particular point. They had to force the person to take it off social media because you are going to put pressure on people. That's not who you are. Why are you projecting what you are not? And so that's where uh, regulation comes in. Yes, yes so since we cannot bring regulate ourselves. Good point about regulation, but I think it's something that we just also have to be conscious as citizens. Some people don't conscious. are not conscious. You have to spank them with the consciousness. Yes. That's, that's and that's 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 you men will join. Uh, yeah, sure. All uh, right. right. I think that was a lively discussion. I wish we could go on and on because I really say. enjoyed it. <laughs> so after the break, Victor talks to us about passion and success.